greatest stories have come to us from the seas. Hidden in the depths of the ocean are tales of human endeavor, of exploration, of discovery, of fate, of defeat and victory, of wars and sacrifice. This is the story of one such endeavor. An endeavor that had such fearful lords stacked against it that even the hardened sea dogs had called it mission impossible. This is the story of the killer squad. For the last 3,000 years, mankind has fought battles on the high seas. Full-fledged navies came into being 1,000 years before the birth of Christ. All nations with naval armadas have dreamed of striking the enemy home port. There is only one navy in the modern era that has actually attempted this feat. Till then, it had just been the dream strike of ambitious Admirals. This navy was then headed by a man who many termed a dreamer. He had spent his childhood in the Manora island off the coast of Karachi, Pakistan. Subsequently, he rose to be the chief of the Indian Navy. For Admiral Nanda, it had become something of a magnificent obsession to hit Karachi in the advent of the next war and avenged the Pakistani sneak attack on Dwarka in the 1965 conflict. Senior officers opined that such an operation could end in disaster as a naval force venturing so close to an enemy shore would be effectively neutralized. In 1968, the Indian Navy had decided to acquire a secret weapon from the Soviet Union. Consequently, Commander V.B. Yadav a crusty old bachelor of the Indian Navy had gotten his posting orders for the top secret project AK-25, the raising of the missile boat squadron. This was to have a total of eight missile boats in two divisions of four each. In end August 1969, two Air India flights were chartered for Mumbai and Delhi. Some 70 officers and 230 sailors of the Indian Navy were flown all the way to Moscow. From Moscow, they were transported to Vladivostok in a huge Russian transport aircraft, and then further to the island of Ruski Ostrov. This was to be their action stations and their training ground for the next eight months. Their technical training classes commenced in November 1969. Now the crews came across the Soviet OSA missile boat that they were supposed to train on. These missile boats were actually the real, the key dramatis personae of this entire story. OSA means wasp in Russian. The real sting of these missile boats were these four Stiex ship-to-ship missiles with a range of 20 to 30 nautical miles. And they could blow the biggest enemy cruiser out of the water. The P-15 missile was armed with a half-ton warhead and its homing radar could seek and destroy a target with deadly accuracy. It was the real McCoy of those years. No other Navy had anything to match it. Other than the missiles, there was another technological marvel on the ship, the Rangout radar. This had a range of 40 to 60 nautical miles and could outrange any radar that was on the cruisers and destroyers of that era. No other Navy had anything to match the Ranga. With three engines of 4,000 horsepower each, these missile crafts could reach speeds of 40 knots. 
These Osa missile boats could look deep and strike deep. They had only one primary constraint. Their short range. Their small fuel tanks permitted them to operate only close to the coast. The Russians had designed them primarily for coastal defense. In fact, Korshkov believed that these boats were expendable. They need not come back from all missions. By the time the bitter cold had set in in Siberia, the seas around Vladivostok had started to freeze. Before the sea could freeze completely, the Russian Navy moved in an Osa missile boat into the island of Ruski Ostrov so that the Indian crews could train on the boat. The temperatures plummeted now to minus 35 degrees below zero. As soon as the snow and the ice melted, they took their Osa missile boat out into the ocean and they were impressed by its power. Its three gas turbine engines could whip up speeds of 40 knots an hour as also they could see out to 40 to 60 nautical miles with their rang out radar. When they tested their missiles, they were shocked to find the targets as far away as 20 nautical miles were blown to smithereens. At last, their training finally came to an end and the boats were now ready to be shipped to India. But neither the Russians nor the Indian crew could ever dream of the audacious and impossible mission that they and their boats would be put to. Eight of these missile boats were loaded onto a huge Russian merchant vessel and shipped to India. Coincidentally, there were no heavy cranes that could lift these boats in Mumbai. Hence, they were offloaded in Kolkata and had to be towed to Mumbai. The steel wire ropes used for towing used to snap. This is where typical Indian jugaad kicked in. The sailors improvised and used Garvare nylon ropes. Captain Pratap of INS Tir was given charge of this towing operation. As these boats were being towed all the way from the Bay of Bengal to the Arabian Sea, the idea began to form in the minds of the sailors. If their missile boats could be towed all the way from Kolkata to Mumbai, why not? from Mumbai to Karachi. Thus were the seeds of Op Trident and Op Python formed in the minds of these men. Thus the missile boats were towed along the coast and reached Mumbai in January 1971, well before the monsoons began that year. The attack on Karachi was conceived and planned in Vladivostok. One evening, in the late spring of 1970, the commanding officers and senior officers were having a get-together, when suddenly Captain Mayer said, Gentlemen, now that you're going to command this very capable missile boat, what do you intend doing with it? I felt compelled to rise on my feet and in total awe asked him, Sir, do you mean you want us to attack Karachi? In 1970, there was a terrible cyclone in East Pakistan. Millions of people were killed or rendered homeless. The callous neglect shown by the government and army of West Pakistan in tackling this massive human tragedy angered the people of East Pakistan to no end. Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, who swept the subsequent elections, was not allowed to become the Prime Minister. This led to a major revolt in East Pakistan. General Yahya Khan now called his most ruthless general, General Tikka Khan, and briefed him personally. Tikka, the situation in East Pakistan has become alarming. Mujibur Rahman wants to become the Prime Minister. It is totally unacceptable. They have started a revolt now. India is behind all this. I want you to be ruthless and bring down these traitors. You 
use as much force you need to. I want you to crush this rebellion. Do you understand? General Tikka Khan earned the title of the Butcher of Bangladesh. Three million Bangladeshis were killed. One million women were raped. And six million refugees were forced to flee to India. The burden of the six million refugees placed an intolerable strain on the Indian economy. The genocide in East Pakistan has created an unprecedented crisis. We cannot tolerate this for much longer. All of India's appeals to resolve the problem peacefully were contemptuously ignored and the crackdown was intensified. The countdown to war had begun. Naval headquarters now began contingency planning. The Navy Chief, Admiral Nanda, held a conference at Naval Headquarters. Admiral Kohli, CNC Western Naval Command and Commodore Dawson, the Director of Naval Operations, took part. In war, what can the Pakistan Navy do? Sir, if submarines could attack our ships off Bombay or other ports like Goa Damandu or even Vishakhapatnam, its battleships could attack our merchant vessels in the Persian Gulf entrance. It could also launch sporadic attack on the west coast, especially the Gujarat, like they did in the 1965 war. So why don't we attack first and bottle up Pakistan Navy in the Karachi Harbor? Attack, damn it! It's the best form of defense. Sounds good, Chief, but it's most dangerous and inadvisable because the Pakistanis have a well-coordinated defense layout to meet our offensive plans. First of all, the Pakistanis have 16-inch coastal guns at the Rora Point in Karachi. Thereafter, you have the Pak Air Force giving them support. The moment our fleet is 200 nautical miles from the coast. Please don't forget that there are air bases at Karachi and Badal. I would also like to point out that besides all this, the ships in Karachi Harbor and submarines are a viable threat. Therefore, I would consider this attack to be suicidal. For all the reasons that you mentioned, Admiral Kohli, the Pakistanis also would not expect an attack there. We could then achieve total surprise. Gentlemen, I grew up as a child in Manora, and I know Karachi Harbor like the back of my hand. The metallic oil storage tanks there at Kiamari would be perfect targets for our ship-to-ship -ship missile. We am my word that given an opportunity, the Indian Navy will make the world's biggest bonfire of these. So please, get on with it and war game these plans thoroughly. We must strike and strike first. We must storm the citadel. Anyone who doesn't believe it can be done should resign. That's it. The Western fleet now started a whole series of exercises to integrate the missile boats with the fleet and also work out the detailed tactics and drills for their operation. It was found that the Patia frigates used the same type of fuel as the missile boats. It was therefore decided to group these two squadrons together for the operation. Commander Babru Bhan Yadav was now appointed the commander of the 25th Missile Boat Squadron. Despite the strong reservations expressed by some of his senior commanders, Admiral Nanda held on tenaciously to his original plan. In October 1971, he met the Prime Minister and decided to brief her on this plan and take her political clearance. Madam, if war breaks out, we propose to attack Karachi. Would the government have any political objection to this strike? Admiral, why are you asking me this question? Madam, in 1965, the Navy had been told not to operate north of Indian territorial water to avoid escalation of the conflict. This constrained our options and placed us in a very difficult position. I will take care of the military aspects, but for the political aspects, I need your clearance. Well, Admiral, if there is a war, there is a war. Oh, thank you, madam. I have my answer. The war clouds were now gathering swiftly. It was time to sail to battle. 
On second, third night, the missile boats Nepath and Veer, under the command of Lieutenant Commander Kavina and O.P. Mehta, set sail from the Mumbai harbour. The squadron commander, Commander B.B. Yadav, Kilo 25, was on board the Nipat. They were towed by the INS Teer and the INS Satlaj to an anchorage south of Diu. The third missile boat, INS Nirghat, under the command of Lieutenant Commander I.J. Sharma, joined them at this point. On 3rd December 1971, the Pakistan Air Force suddenly attacked six forward Indian Air Force bases. The Bangladesh war had begun. For the missile boats, it was time to join the action with the first strike, Operation Trident. On 4th of December, two Petya class frigates, the INS Kachal under Commander Zadu and INS Kilton under Commander Rao, rendezvoused with the missile boats to form the Trident Force. They set sail for Karachi. The plan was to sail westwards and then northwards to reach Karachi by midnight. Commander Rao of the Kilton was in tactical command of this force till 75 nautical miles of Karachi. After that, Commander Babrubhan Yadav was to take charge. I was embarked on Nepal as K-25. I took complete charge of this action, keeping one aim in mind that we will attack Karachi come what may. To ensure radio silence, Commander Babrubhan Yadav brought all the missile boats together and gave them the final orders on the loud hailer. The men of the 25th Squadron were now dressed in their khaki uniforms for battle. They were asked if anybody wanted to back out now. Clearly, no one did. They were in fact raring to go into battle. The success signal for the operation was very aptly codenamed Angar. This was to signify to the Navy chief that Karachi indeed was on fire. On 4th December morning, at around 0700 hours, four hunter aircrafts of the Indian Air Force, led by Wing Commander Das, with 250 gallon drop tanks, swooped low over the Karachi coast, flew along the coast, and then suddenly gained height over the Keramari oil tanks. They sprayed them with their rockets and guns and vanished as suddenly as they had come. 4th December, 1500 hours, the Trident Task Force was steaming towards Karachi in an arrowhead formation. They were anxiously scanning the sonar for Pakistani submarines and keeping a sharp lookout for Pakistani aircraft. As night fell, the ships were still exposed. Not only was it a full moon night, they encountered bioluminescence, which resulted in the ships leaving a phosphorant wake on the sea. There were strong chances that they would now be detected. At 2200 hours, they reached within 75 nautical miles of Karachi and Commander Babrubhan Yadav took charge of the operations. The missile boats now switched on their rang out radars. They could be picked up anytime. Steady on this course. Easy now. At 22.43 hours on 4th of December, the radar on board the Nirghat picked up a big ship on the port bow. It was located some 20 nautical miles and heading southwest. Nirghat informed Nipat immediately. Commander Yadav took the call. Designate as target Rhino Foxtrot. IJ, prepare to engage target now. Aye, aye, sir. Number one missile is ready to engage target Rhino Foxtrot. Launch number one missile. Roger, Wilco. Number one missile launch. 
The target was hit but was still painting on the radar. Kilo 25, target is hit and is slowed down to 6 knots but is still showing on radar, sir. Engage again. Launch number 2 missile. Aye, sir. Number 2 missile lost. INS Nirghat launched the second missile. Soon thereafter, the target disappeared from the radar screen. The target was Pakistan Navy ship Khyber, a destroyer of the Pakistan Navy. The first missile had homed in onto the target with precision. Her on the starboard side, she had lost propulsion. PNS Khyber then transmitted a mayday signal saying it had been hit by enemy aircraft. The second missile had then slammed into her boiler room. There was a sheet of flame, and the ship broke into two and sank. The panic stricken crew began to jump overboard. The Khyber, under command of Captain Naseem Malik, now simply sank like a rock. Meanwhile, the Nipath radar had picked up another target. So radar contact moving at 60 knots towards Karachi. Seems to be a huge target. Could be their use of power. Launch number one missile now. Number one missile launcher. Nipath launched her first missile. This is a massive target. Launch the second missile. Aye, right, sir. The target was merchant vessel Venus Challenger, a huge merchant ship carrying arms and supplies for the Pakistani army. The ship was badly hit. It began to flounder and then sank slowly. The target disappeared from the radar screen. The third missile boat under Commander O.P. Mehta now picked up yet another target. It was the PNS Mohafiz, a Pakistani minesweeper, then under the command of Lieutenant Ashad Aleem, INS Veer reported it to Nepal. We have identified the target on our port bow. Target identified. We engage now with the missile. Over. Number one missile away. Make sure we sink it. Launch the second missile, beat. Aye, sir. Launching number two missile. The mine sweeper Mohafiz disintegrated and sank immediately. The target simply disappeared from the radar screen. Commander Yadav now ordered his missile boat to proceed north, closer to Karachi. Keep moving. Closing on the Karachi harbor. Be careful now, boys. We are in the range of their coastal guns. So, our third missile is malfunctioned. Just don't worry about it. Keep moving. Close in on the harbor. Three Pakistani ships had been sunk already. The Pakistanis were aware they were under attack. But this fact did not deter Nepat from closing in onto the enemy harbor. <laughs> Sir, we're just 80 miles from the harbour now. Keep steady. Maintain course. Keep moving. Nepat was now just on the doorsteps of the enemy harbour. So I can see some installations on my radar. Looks like oil tanks. Okay. This is it. Kavina, launch a fourth missile now. Roger, Wilco. Launch number four missile now. The boss takes missile, pushed off in a sheet of flame. It hit the Kyamari oil tank and it exploded. The conflagration soon spread to the neighboring tanks and they began to explode one after another. Soon, the entire horizon was lit up with an airy glow. Commander Yadav slowly picked up the transmitter and gave out the success signal. Angad. I see again Angad. This was the signal for the attacking force to turn around. Truly, Karachi was burning and his code signal clearly conveyed that message to his chief in New Delhi. All hands on deck. We are now entering the most critical phase of our operation. Explication. Be on the sharp lookout for air attacks. 
be must. Get away before they break. Speed is vital. Explicate immediately. K25 to all stations. Pull back to RV immediately. The Kela Squadron missile boats now turned around sharply. Their 4,000 horsepower engines now wind at full power as the boats sped away, leaving huge wakes on the sea. They were also leaving a trail of death and destruction in their wake. Two enemy warships, a destroyer and a minesweeper had been sunk along with a massive merchant vessel carrying supplies for the Pakistani army. Worse, the oil tanks in the Kiamari harbour were burning fiercely. The Pakistani navy was devastated.